we ended the previous lecture uh, by introducing the concept of uh, relative velocity of fluid with respect to the uh, rotor so we explored this concept further in this uh, lecture uh, so we start by uh, writing down the formal definition of the relative velocity of the fluid so the relative velocity vector c is uh, the absolute velocity vector v minus the weight velocity vector u we may also write this as absolute velocity vector v is equal to relative velocity vector c plus uh, blade velocity vector u uh, since this is a vector addition we need to show this in this form or in this form so this is called a velocity triangle and both these are called velocity triangles notice that the triangle is constructed uh, to indicate the fact that the absolute velocity vector v is the sum of the relative velocity vector c plus the blade velocity vector u uh, the same relationship is applicable here also as uh, can be ascertained from the direction of these vectors uh, the difference between the two velocity triangle lies in the uh, nature of these angles alpha and beta okay now the angle alpha is called the flow angle and that is the angle that the absolute velocity vector makes with the reference direction which is indicated here like this and the angle beta is uh, the blade angle or uh, the angle that the relative velocity vector makes with the reference direction so that definition holds for both these cases notice that the reference direction is uh, the axial direction in case of an axial machine and radial direction in case of a radial machine and it is perpendicular to the blade the velocity vector in both cases now since this velocity absolute velocity vector is uh, an, in the uh, clockwise direction uh, from the reference direction by an angle alpha this angle would be given a negative value because it is in the clockwise direction uh, alpha would be a number like minus 15 degrees uh, 15 degrees or minus 30 degrees and so on now this angle beta because it is in a counter clockwise direction from the reference direction this would be a positive number so this would be something like plus uh, 30 degrees or 60 degrees and so on so in the case of this velocity triangle alpha is less than 0 and beta is greater than 0 which is why the triangle looks the way it does now in this case it can be seen that both alpha and beta or in the uh, counter clockwise direction i'm sorry in the clockwise direction from the reference direction so both alpha and beta are negative in this uh, in this case and uh, because uh, under design condition the uh, uh, velocity is blade velocity and the flow velocity is such that the uh, relative velocity is tangential to the Uh, blade surface we discussed this in the previous lecture so it, it just glides on and off the blade surface so the angle that the relative velocity vector makes with the reference direction is the blade angle beta and uh, this uh, sign convention is very important we will use this convention when constructing velocity triangles uh, velocity triangles will be constructed taking into account whether alpha and beta are positive or negative but once a triangle is constructed other relationships may be uh, determined or ascertained using uh, simple algebra okay so irrespective of whether the velocity triangle looks like this or looks like this the following relationships hold v theta is always uh, v times sin alpha so that can be seen here so v theta is always v times sin alpha and vx or vr depending on the case is always v cosine alpha similarly c theta is always c sin beta and cx or cr is always c cosine beta and notice that uh, cx is equal to vx or cr is equal to vr in both these cases so here also you can see that uh, v theta is equal to v sin alpha and vx is equal to v cosine alpha and c theta is c sin beta and c x or c r is c cosine beta which is what we have written here so these are applicable for all velocity triangles so as we said uh, before 
when constructing the velocity triangle we have to make use of the sign uh, attached to the angles alpha and beta but once the construction is complete uh, the relationships are simple algebraic relationship which we can uh, exploit for further calculations okay so from the geometric construction of the velocity triangle it's easy to see that for this triangle or for this triangle pythagoras theorem of, uh, applies and for this triangle or for uh, this triangle again pythagoras theorem applies so we may write b square equal to b or, or x square plus v theta square and similarly for uh, relative velocity c what is said here we have already used the fact that c r comma x uh, is equal to v r comma x and we also notice that v theta uh, in this case is equal to u minus uh, c theta this is c theta so u uh, v theta is equal to u minus c theta and in this case v theta is equal to u plus c theta so we may write v theta equal to u plus minus c theta and if we uh, multiply both sides of this expression by u we get v theta times u equal to u square plus minus c theta times u furthermore if we eliminate this v r comma x square between these two relationships we actually end up with uh, a relationship that looks like this which leads to this relationship v theta times u so if i substitute this into the uh, the expression for uh, u times c theta into this i end up with an expression that looks like this now if i replace the v theta times u term in the euler turbine equation with this expression then we end up with the following expression for again uh, euler turbine equation this is another form of the euler turbine equation which involves only absolute velocity blade velocity and uh, the relative velocity not components of this but absolute velocity blade velocity and relative velocity uh, once again the interesting interesting aspect about this equation is that this involves only uh, fluid dynamic quantities namely absolute velocity blade velocity and relative velocity uh, so what we would like to be able to do is uh, eventually to be able to relate this to changes in thermodynamic properties of the fluid it's also not very difficult to uh, write the following relationship so if i take uh, uh, an axial machine so if i take an axial machine like this uh, if, uh, at any cross section at any cross section you can see that the mass flow rate that passes through the entire cross section is nothing but the density uh, at that cross section or density at our reference value times axial velocity times the cross sectional area so that is what we have written here and a similar relationship may be written for a radial machine as well so we have written that m dot uh, at the inlet section is density at the inlet blade element times axial velocity times the cross sectional area and same thing for exit and this is the relationship for the radial machine so again here b is the uh, width of the rotor blade this should not be easy to visualize so uh, you may go back and uh, look at the uh, centrifugal machine and convince yourself that this is indeed the case so this is how mass flow rate is related to the axial component of velocity so you can see that the m dot is actually related to vx1 or vr1 and the remaining quantities in the oil turbine equation of the velocity component so we can now see uh, why velocity triangles play such an important role in uh, turbo machinery application okay. what is that the uh, height of the triangle which is either vr or vx is connected to the mass flow rate uh, that passes through the rotor and the base of the triangle which is either uh, u uh, uh, minus c theta or u plus c theta is related to the uh, uh, work that is produced by the machine so that is the term that appears in the uh, right hand side of the euler turbine equation so it is clear why uh, the um, uh, velocity triangle plays such an important role in uh, turbo machinery literature so you can see that you know uh, the uh, height of the velocity triangle uh, is related to the mass flow rate and the base is related to v theta which is u plus minus t 
and this is what appears in the right hand side of uh, the Euler turbine equation. So two key performance parameters of a turbo machine are controlled by two components of the relative velocity. Okay, so this is why both relative velocity as well as the velocity triangle uh, play a very crucial role in uh, turbo machinery theory. Okay, so we have been talking about the fact that uh, we need to connect up the uh, Euler turbine equation, which as it stands contains only fluid mechanical quantities to uh, thermodynamical quantities, which is what we uh, take up next. Okay, so if I apply a steady flow energy equation to the rotor, assuming uh, no heat loss, uh, this is what we get. Notice that this is the static enthalpy. This is the absolute velocity of the fluid or change in total kinetic energy of the fluid. We neglect elevation changes in the uh, rotor, which is uh, it is quite all right. It's not a bad assumption to make. Uh, elevation changes will not be very substantial uh, in this case. Now, the connection between and the thermodynamic uh, equation that we have written here, or change in the thermodynamic state, and the oil turbine equation is provided by the Wx dot term. So the Wx dot term here can be replaced using the Euler turbo machine equation. And if we do that, so we end up with a relation that looks like this. So on the left hand side here, we have change in the thermodynamic property of the fluid, which is change in enthalpy. And on the right hand side, we have change in uh, velocity, relative velocity, and a change in blade velocity. So this provides the link between the uh, fluid mechanics and thermodynamics of a turbo machinery process. In fact, we can uh, put this in an even more powerful form by writing this uh, in differential form along the streamline. So let us say that we take a streamline uh, which uh, uh, passes through the rotor from inlet to outlet. So we may write the enthalpy change at any uh, point in the streamline as dh equal to d of u square over 2 minus d of c square over 2. Must bear in mind that uh, dh or incremental change in the property is uh, final minus initial, which is why we have uh, introduced a negative sign here. Since u is r omega, we may write uh, d of u square over 2 as d of r square omega square over 2. If you use the TDS relationship, TDS equal to dh minus vdp, and uh, assume the thermodynamic process to be isotropic, and then ds becomes equal to 0, and we may write dh equal to vdp or dp over rho. And so finally, we may write dp over rho equal to d of r square omega square over 2 minus d of c square over 2. This is uh, probably uh, one of the uh, most important and insightful equations that we will encounter in turbo machinery theory. This finally tells us that the pressure rise or change in pressure along the streamline uh, is due to two, uh, two quantities. One, is a centrifugal action. The other one is due to acceleration or deceleration of the fluid in the blade passage. Notice that the relative velocity appears here, not the absolute velocity. So we will explore this equation further and then try to uh, get a, a good idea on why uh, this is uh, so important because this actually determines uh, fundamentally how uh, devices operate. And as we just saw, uh, if you apply SFE to the rotor, uh, we had this equation. In fact, we can recognize the fact that H1 plus V1 square over 2 is nothing but the stagnation enthalpy of the fluid. So we may write this as M dot times H01 minus H02. Okay. Now, if I uh, go back to this equation, uh, and uh, write it for an axial machine for which u2 is equal to u1. Then we actually end up with a relationship for an axial machine, which looks like this h1 minus h2 plus this. And if we rearrange this, then I recognize the fact that h1 plus c1 square over 2 is equal to h2 plus c2 square over 2 uh, is equal to h0 relative. So this tells us that the stagnation enthalpy in the rotating frame of reference does not change. In other words, there is no work transfer in the frame of reference uh, that rotates with the blades and the stagnation enthalpy, which is reckoned uh, or calculated using the relative velocity in this frame of reference, remains a constant. So the stag relative stagnation enthalpy remains a constant. And remember, this is calculated in the frame of reference that rotates with the blade. 
the uh, the total stagnation enthalpy changes across the rotor depending on whether work is supplied to the rotor or uh, power is generated by the rotor in case power is generated by the rotor then there is a drop in stagnation enthalpy and in case work is supplied or power is supplied to the rotor then there is an increase in the stagnation enthalpy this is in a frame of reference where the rotor rotates this is the energy equation for the entire rotor this is the energy equation for the rotor in the frame of reference where the rotor is stationary and for an axial machine okay now uh, this is a very important fact for an axial machine and uh, let us try to illustrate this on a ps diagram okay oh, i'm sorry on a hs diagram so here y ax uh, enthalpy is plotted on the y axis and specific enthalpy is plotted on the x axis and this is state 1 and state 2 this is the static enthalpy at state 1 static enthalpy at state 2 so this is v1 square over 2 so notice that this is h01 h1 plus v1 square over 2 is h01 similarly h2 plus v2 square over 2 is h02 so h01 minus h02 is the specific work output from the machine so that is this h01 minus h02 in addition, for an axial machine, we may write H1 plus C1 square over 2 is equal to H2 plus C2 square over 2, indicating that the H0 relative uh, for an axial machine is a constant. 